Welcome into Warriors Outsiders, brought to you by FitAid. If you are feeling like you need to recover from a full night of exhaustion and exuberance and happiness, well, there's no better way to do it than recover with FitAid, a citrus medley of all your vitamins that goes straight into your tummy. Hey, I brought mine. There it is. There it is. Yeah, I didn't drinking. forget it. You've been drinking a little too I much. I know. Yeah. yeah. Calm down, big guy. Hey, you know what I need right now is uh, one of those white cups that Clay had. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It the was sunflower, sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds. That's had to be, right? Had With had his uh, White Sox yeah. jersey. Nothing. It, it hit Trace Thompson. Trace. White Sox. Yeah. Former okay. Dodger. Yeah. True. And yeah. A's. And yeah. A lot of different teams. Okay. Right. Hey. Drew Schiller, Grant Liffman. Okay, so uh, we have so much to get to in just a second. We're going to play Curry's postgame sound, which you did not get to hear on postgame. So before we get to that, let's talk about predictions. Yes. Drew, you were wrong. Uh, Draymond <laughs> Green did not have a triple-double. He had six points, five rebounds, eight assists, but six fouls. He fouled out, which was not – you just don't see that very often. Odd, yeah, yeah. and he picked up his fourth kind of midway late through the third quarter. The Bucks were in the bonus, and he reached in and fouled yeah. Middleton. There was no reason to do it. it was a so, and his second foul, I remember, he kind of just he, – he kind of knew he was about to get a foul on that. It was an odd, odd Yeah, odd. you know, he's got those two fingers on his left hand taped together, the sprained mm. finger. I think it's uh, – I think it's really bothering him. So that's how you commit fouls is you, you No, just his overall game. I think it's bothered and that's I why my that's prediction was it. wrong. That's the reason. Yeah. Okay, but let's talk about another wrong prediction. And that uh, comes from my prediction that I said James Wiseman would have 20 or more points. Now, while you I were was looking good. While I was wrong with my prediction, yeah. I felt very good at halftime because that was the best half of basketball that James Wiseman has played this NBA season in a game in which he is playing a very good opponent, uh -huh. and the game matters. Yes. And it was, uh, you know, the first half versus the second half, so he was just starting right out the gate. Mm -hmm. But my goodness, he he really, what, he finished with 11 and 10 in the first half. Yes, in and 15 the, minutes. And the 10 rebounds were real. They were not just, there was a couple that just fell to him, but otherwise he was going up high to get them. He had a nice O board that I remember reaching over the guy, yes. tipping it to himself. He went strong, and he was grabbing the boards. And there were several plays in which he was along the three-point line, because as you said to me right before we went on air, for his matchup against Brooke Lopez, who spends so much time shooting threes, that's a pretty good matchup for Wiseman at this point. And even though he was out on the perimeter, shots were going up, and he was going back into the paint and getting some of those long rebounds. That's important. You have to get back into the play instead of just leaking out down the floor. Now, he did leak out down the floor, one time after contesting the three, and his right-handed dunk didn't quite Not work out. Yet. In fact, how many points did he finish with? 13. Okay, so yeah. if that had cost you no, 20. No, that was a, that would, oh, I would have, my, my prediction would have been right. I would have been me. so no, happy. It did not. Uh, it might have cost him because then he would have gone on a roll. He'd been so excited and dumped it. Right, right, right. But, uh, no, James Wiseman, you know, again, uh, Steve Kerr made a joke about it in his press conference, how they, they do a report card after every game. But right. let's be honest, that's kind of how it has been with James Wiseman. It's game to game and play by play. You're kind of analyzing it. And the question was just pretty simple. What did you think of James Wiseman tonight? Like it was, <laughs> I love it, it was. I love it. But Steve, you know, he. I think he was waiting to be able to answer that question sarcastically right. after a win in which Wiseman played pretty well. So the the circumstances were right for Steve to kind of go that route. We give the, the we give the sarcastic answer. But yes. at the end of the day, no, it, it, we do talk about James Wiseman every we day. We do. That's what we're supposed to do because uh -huh. he's such a massive part of their future. And James Wiseman tonight was exactly what they needed. They ran a ton of pick and rolls, as Bonte said at the yes. end of the uh, broadcast, in which Kevin O'Connor of The Ringer pointed out how many pick and rolls they ran with Steph Curry. Um, it was just a really good game for James Wiseman in a game that hopefully he can build on because we've seen inconsistency throughout the season. Maybe he can just build upon it. And I really liked how one of his dunks from Steph wasn't off of a high ball screen. It was Wiseman reading the play. He set a pin down mm -hmm. for Steph, who gets the pass, and then Wiseman notices, oh, there's two guys guarding Steph. Slip. Slips real quick. He gets the pass and is able to go in and get the and one. Then there was a play later in the quarter in which he set a high ball screen, like, way far out beyond the three-point line. And Steph kind of gave him a pocket pass, and he, was, he caught it so far out, he had to take a couple dribbles and then ended up going in and missed a shot kind of off balance. That's the difference right now with Wiseman. If he catches it right around the basket, that's where he needs to be. When he has to put it on the deck and make a decision, he's just not 
quite there yet, and that's fine because he's going to work on that a lot this offseason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yes. one also thing, uh, Draymond missed the three, but he did a skip pass out of the post. He got it, yeah. picked it out to Draymond yep. across the court, which was yes. a good uh, vision as well. So, again, these are small things, incremental things, but he just needs to build on those, and it's looking like he is. And speaking of Draymond, in the second half, when Wiseman, you know, didn't have as big of an impact, he was much better in the first half, there was a play in which Chris Middleton had Steph on him, and he was able to spin baseline and get a bucket, and Draymond was yelling for Wiseman to go help, and he didn't, and Steve Kerr ended up calling timeout, and you could see – some of the frustrating body language creep in a little bit for Wiseman, but hey, he ended up getting to play in the fourth quarter. Um, Grant, I know we got Steph Curry sound yeah, coming we up. We got to show this Wiseman clip. Yeah, though. let's show a highlight yeah. right here. This is a sequence, and this is the best sequence we've seen from Wiseman. Oh, man. Uh, maybe the whole season, just in terms of everything he does here. Jordan Poole, more on him soon, but what a perfect, perfect. pass. You hope to see more of that. Eyeball screen, yes. shoves his guy out of the way, and dives straight to the rim. And then watch the way Wiseman is helping. He steps up. Bryn Forbes, who was making threes, that's whew, Just a money perfect. block. And then this, I think, I think this is the most impressive of the three plays we're showing here. Right. Watch the way he reads the court, flies out at DiVincenzo, leads to a travel. He's pumped. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. He was jacked up and Steph rightfully so. Star staring at him, cheering him on. They, yes. They all recognized how good of a sequence it was yep. that was for him. It, it was just, it was smart basketball moving on one play to the next there yeah. are so many plays with a 24 second shot clock you don't have time to get discouraged no nope. move on and make the next play okay no time to get discouraged friend of the show of the game presented by amici pay the bills baby at amici's east coast pizzeria i forget the money forget the bills give me pizza because i really want pizza i'm hungry and it's actually really good food and real quick you're obviously dipping that amici's in ranch dressing right i mean i, I what am i new but the reason I bring that up is because Kent Bazemore, I remember earlier this season, saying that he's just like, no ranch dressing. Oh, I remember that. But no, I, if, if you don't know the dip pizza and ranch, on. Amici's will tell you. Anyway, I'm having cravings um, right now. I'm going to start with this one. Okay. I'm going to go Jordan Poole. Yeah. In 17 minutes tonight, he had 10 points, but really it's the six assists. And he started off where he was trying to be facilitator and he was thinking too much. Yeah. And he was like, hey, I need to distribute the ball here and do this and just make sure this guy's involved in that. No. no. Jordan Poole, you have the ball in your hands. Quick, decisive, aggressive, assertive, all the things Whoa, you want to see. Whoa, keep going. Jordan Poole has to do those things when he's out there because that's who he is. Yes. And he is a guy that can get buckets, mm -hmm. and he also can make plays for other guys Definitely. by driving and kicking, and he also can dish. So I, I really like they put in ball screens with James Wiseman as well. Jordan Poole, that's the way you play, not the, not the. oh, I'm just going to get him involved, <laughs> him involved. No, attack. Now, defensively, even though he has shown growth on that end of the court this he season, he, he allowed some buckets in this one. And in fact, I think there was a chance that he was maybe going to get a chance to close the game. Yeah. But it was 107 to 101 with about five minutes to go after a timeout. And the Bucks ran something in which... Jordan Poole and Steph Curry needed to communicate and switch out. Poole did not. He gets hit on the screen, and it leads to a wide open. I think it was DiVincenzo or Connington. Uh, Connington. Yeah. yeah, hits the three, makes it 110 to 101, and you're like, ah, oh, that might be somewhat of a backbreaker, and Steve Kerr took him out of the game right after that. So these are, uh, these are the little things. Now, if he really wants to play, it's defense, too. Who did you take him out for? Um, Your friend of the yes. show of the game. Who do you got? Uh, who do I have? Kent Bazemore. Kent Bazemore? I mean, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was a Drew or false because, I mean, he was kind of. Kent Bazemore. Kent Bazemore. He just popped up onto uh, the screen. Four for four from beyond the arc. He was three of 22 since the All-Star break. And remember, he was 44% before that, so that was a big deal. Hey, if you want to see a play in which you thought Kent Bazemore was going to commit a foul and didn't, go watch the end of the third quarter after Steph hits that ridiculous three to pull the Warriors to within six. Bazemore twice played good defense, did not foul, and got a good contest. I'm nervous about the last two-minute report, though. Because you think he hacked him a little bit on call. I, the the, I, man, yeah. we didn't really well, you get You don't call that. You don't, you but don't the NBA, just, just yeah. don't be surprised if you uh, I always see ignore that two-minute report anyway. A headline tomorrow yeah. written by Warriors get lucky with last two-minute report. I just have a feeling, but hey, you know what? Well, first of all, can you imagine if they call that foul on him? No. 
that's the point. You don't like, call that with the, No, but with the Bazemore <laughs> fouling, know, know. Warriors fans Kent, would have Kent Bazemore lost was very good tonight, oh, and he is fantastic. one of the big reasons they won this game. And we'll talk about another person later on that was a big reason they won this game. Hey, remember good Steph teams. Curry? He had a very good oh. game tonight. Incredibly impressive. He had 41 points on 14 of 21 from the field. He had five threes, six rebounds, four assists. He was doing that with a broken, you know. Was Drew Holiday even out there defending him? I Steph think didn't even, you mean didn't the, didn't best, the best point guard defender. And by the way, he really is. Drew Holiday is so good. Anyway, yeah. all that happened, and we haven't even got to hear him speak yet. Let's so listen let's just, to him. Just throw it to him. Yeah. Um, Steph, just simply put, how much did you guys need this win? A lot. Um, it's pretty clear what rough road we've been on. Um, and uh, we just <clears throat> needed, it was good to have a close game, even though we were down in the fourth quarter where we had an opportunity to come back and just claw out a win, especially they were hitting shots all over the place in the fourth quarter. Kelly hit some huge ones for us to keep us close. Bays was uh, amazing all over the court tonight. And uh, it was a good contribution from you know everybody that stepped foot on the floor. And then defensively down the stretch, getting an, enough stops to, you know, seal the deal it was it was a good win for us. Steve said that you had talked to him about extending your minutes, and you did obviously come in two minutes early in the fourth. Um, can you detail how that conversation came to be? Hey, coach, can I play two extra more minutes tonight? Sure, Steph, that works great. Okay, I'll see you in four minutes um what, did you feel that it was just like necessary tonight to, to chase this window no i don't even qualify like that i think it's uh I, I was feeling good in terms of the injury and all that and you know everything else knowing the schedule um the two days off you know after tonight so i think we took all that into account but <clears throat> It's all based on, I mean, I feel good pretty much every game, so I feel like I could play more. But, you know, obviously, considering where we are right now and the way the game was shaping out, um, it was winning time, and thankfully it worked out. So um, I don't know what that looks like on the season. I played a couple extra minutes, what our record is, but um, it was necessary tonight. Hi, Steph. It, it sure seemed like so many different different guys made made little plays and and you know had energy on both ends and and James said he wanted to hit the floor at every chance I mean is that is that stuff contagious infectious when when one guy's doing it 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 sort of works where everybody catches on and it comes together maybe just can be the turning point I mean we'll go find out <laughs> it's uh it's that kind of cycle we've been on all season so um, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the night. You could see a lot of emotion tonight from everybody. Uh, we all knew how much we needed this. And you want to maintain that joy and energy. Um, and hopefully, you know, come Friday, Saturday, put together two really good performances and give yourself a chance to win um, and sustain that. That's all you can do at this point. So, uh, the 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 good vibes and joy and energy that we had tonight you have to stay even keel and that's kind of how i'm trying to approach this knowing um it was a, it was a good win much necessary for us and and uh we have a good practice on thursday and <clears throat> find ways to bottle that up for for you know uh friday friday's game do you know how we give uh steph the money in the intro mm -hmm. I think he needs to send it back for us allowing his sound yeah. to take our time so away. Time. You know what I'm saying? Like, what does he have to say that's so much more important than us? Seriously. Unbelievable. Gosh. Hey, welcome back to Warriors Outsiders, brought to you by Fit A. Drew Grant. Drew or false? Hey, don't forget. Not you, just everybody. Okay. Don't forget how Kelly Oubre saved the Warriors tonight. Caps lock, Drew. Yeah, I Don't know Steph's a hero. Forget. 
Kent Bazemore had a huge game. Yep. So many different plays, but Kelly Oubre might oh. have been just as important as anybody. Those two threes he hit midway through the fourth quarter when the Warriors were down by 10. He cut it to seven. Drew Holiday makes another one. He makes another huge three with about four minutes to go. Um, and then, of course, the, the clutch free throws where he got, you know, Friendly roll on front both rim, of them, front rim. but that's touch. He also got a really nice friendly roll on a three-pointer in the first half. So it was that kind of night for Kelly Oubre. Speaking of threes, not sure if you have this as a grand analytic. I'm nope. sorry if I'm stealing it. Nope. Made four threes in this game. Yeah, he hasn't done first that since time. Feb 20th. Feb 20. So yeah. right when I said it, I hope I wasn't stealing it from you. I just remembered. You decided to steal it from me. I just remembered. I thought you were going to ask me. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. 17 games, and he was 26% from three mm -hmm. over those 17 games. Now, before we show a clip, how about his block attempt on Bobby Portis? I don't think you're allowed like, to call foul just for the attempt to block that. I mean, and then Ubre got hit in the face by a Drew Holiday elbow. Yeah. He is he takes some beating out yeah. there. But yeah. man, he had a game. I mean, a lot of people out there probably thinking that you know face don't he has. Don't hurt that face. Don't hurt the, the eyes. Don't, don't hurt don't, the don't eyes. Don't hurt that face. Don't do it. But we have to show a clip, okay? Because uh, we've been praising Drew Holiday, who was really good in this game. Did have eight turnovers, though. And one of the reasons he had eight turnovers is because of what Kelly Oubre did on the very first possession of the second half. Two? Roll the clip. Yeah. Now, the stats are up here because... Oh! oh! But look at how he just takes the ball away from Drew, J-R-U-E, not the... Yeah, uh, Drew or false. Right. I mean... Here's the thing. Drew That's Holiday was legit. probably looking at those halftime stats that were on the screen Good and one. didn't see cookies being picked. Good. Hey, right do you see there. Giannis walking in the background there? Do we get? He was watching the stats too. He's walking. He, yeah. See, but Juan still, I mean, then. Ubre defensively, um, yes, he gets beat sometimes back door. There's times where he kind of reaches in, lunges, commits some fouls, but he is just really giving the Warriors great energy on that end. And not many guys can just take the ball away from Drew Holiday like that. But Kelly Ubre with the nine foot. 25 wingspan is able to do it two good games back to back for yes him. very clutch shots yep. at the end of this one yep. there's been multiple times throughout the season we're like oh kelly had a chance to end the game right there you know on a three and he hit some massive threes in this Ooh. one just a really good stuff from kelly Oubre tonight yes i thought one of them was foot on the line did you notice no, I that did, i didn't get that i However, wonder if they reviewed i it. knew for a fact that chris middleton three uh, was not i knew for a fact and it really upset me that they counted as a three I'm speaking sorry. of middleton do we want to talk about the him versus wiggins thing at all right now no. okay all i'll talk about is uh andrew wiggins missed the biggest three of the night at the yeah. end but also got the block on the three at the end so. yes and he did have three buckets in the the fourth quarter despite struggling with yeah. three points through three quarters and look Chris Middleton did outplay Andrew Wiggins like yes. without question but Wiggins got the last laugh and he actually was smiling when the yeah. Warriors won he had a he, big smile literally on the last laugh okay yeah. it is funny though that we're going to transition to this and just uh, this by the way has no bearing on what Kelly Oubre did tonight however drew or false <laughs> Grant's already trying to trade him. <laughs> no. An off-season sign and trade can still happen. I just want to go through this. Yeah. No. Uh, Drew, yes. yes. An off-season sign and trade involving Kelly Oubre can happen. And you explain it. Well, okay. Well, the, the reason I'm saying it is because there have been so much uh, confusion about what can happen with Kelly Oubre after this season. Uh -huh. And if Kelly decides he doesn't want to play for the Warriors anymore and it doesn't work out, Kelly does have the option to go to another team in which they have to or want to do a sign and trade with the Warriors. Yes. Now, in the past, it was like, not a sign and trade. That means you'll be a hard cap. That's what happened with D'Angelo Russell, and they have to go below the cap, and you have to give away Andre Iguodala, and you have to do all these things. Well, the team that is actually signing the player and receiving him, uh -huh. that is the team that gets hard capped, Correct. not the team sending him out. Correct. So, therefore, technically speaking, the Warriors could do a sign-and-trade with Kelly Oubre in the offseason, mm -hmm. collect picks, uh, collect players, collect trade exceptions, do whatever it is, hold that salary slot, if Kelly decides he does want to leave and that team agrees to do a trade. So actually, and I will admit that I don't know for sure because there are a lot of crazy things about the CBA, I don't think that they would be taking back any salary at all. I think that's the only way you can create the trade exception. Oh, the minute you took it, take back any salary, then the, the then it goes to the rules of just like 
the difference in the salary. I, I think what it would be more like is the Warriors signing Kelly Oubre, sending him to the team that he actually really wants to sign with, and then the Warriors, I think, also would be the ones who would be attaching some sort of future second-round pick. That's what happened with the Celtics and yeah. and the Hornets to get with the Gordon Hayward. To get the trade exception. The right. Celtics sent Hayward and two future seconds to Charlotte, and they got, like, one future second in return. So, but let, let's just go a little one step further. So let's just say that Oubre's salary is $15 million uh, for, you know, three, four-year deal with another team. The Warriors then would create a $15 million trade exception just like they created when they had to trade Andre Iguodala and they were sure. able to acquire Kelly Oubre. Kelly Oubre. So basically, long story short, if Kelly Oubre does decide to leave the Warriors or if the Warriors it just doesn't work out, the Warriors could still keep his salary slot available to then use to try to acquire somebody else to fill that void so they don't lose Kelly Oubre for nothing. But if he does sign with another team, that team has to be Agreed. okay with yes. being hard capped because they would be the one that are hard capped. That well. is true. Yeah, so there's so many different factors, but the point is we just wanted to explain that mm -hmm. because there was some confusion about that, but we are now done talking about But Kelly with Oubre the way the he played in this one. Sign him to the max, yes. baby. All right, we're gonna go to break right now. When we come back, we're gonna do some grand analytics and these are gonna blow your mind. Well, I didn't. I didn't steal the one. The gray one. Nope, that's you not the one. Got other ones. That wasn't. That was not mind blowing. Okay. Not even a little bit. Not even. Nope. Not even if there's a fire. Not even if there's a fire. Okay. Okay. And we'll have about two minutes, I presume. Oh, actually, we'll have about a minute and a half. So a minute and a half. James says Steph was cooking tonight. Cooking. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Cooking. Julaine, what's up? Oh, the NBA drama with the, it uh, looks like the hand to the face emoji. What drama? Um, Reggie says trade Drew so Alexis Morgan can come aboard. Reggie, classic. Was that last season Alexis was with us or was that the season before? I, all the seasons blend and, together at this point. And last season kind of would block it out because it was, there was some rough. Did last season happen? You, me, and Alexis did a show together in the NBA uh, summer that league. was well, and the regular season. Oh that, yeah, we did a regular season that was game a together. Sixers, Cavs. That I was think for, that was last season. That was for the NBA. Correct. Center court. Yeah, NBA TV. We did a show. Yeah. yeah. Man, all these. This all blending together at this mm. point. Was that last season? I think so. All right. Yeah. You want now? I know because Tristan Thompson. We were talking about how he's about to be an unrestricted free agent because <laughs> he, he was making threes. Making threes, and we were going nuts about that. And one. He has just been. Bad for the Celtics this it year. It has not worked out. It has not worked out. Didn't he yeah. sign a two-year deal, I think, too? Was it? Was it a one-year nine? I or thought was it, it was 218. I thought. It might have been 218. Or 219. Maybe, maybe the second year is an option of some kind. I do Probably know. a player option. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, see ya. I mean, like, see ya, you're keeping it. His right, name. see ya, uh, Celtics. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm opted in. <laughs> I'm saying. Okay. Let's see. A lot of hullabaloo, says so, Michael. Yeah. Yeah, uh, hullabaloo. 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 But I don't even know what it means now. Like, what does that mean? It's like a bunch of silliness. Right. right? Hullabaloo. Right? Is right? that what, what it means? was the context in which we were talking? Welcome back to Warriors Outsiders, brought to you by Fit A, Drew Grant. Okay, for Grant Analytics, I'm going to do something a little different here, and I put out a tweet earlier. I'm just going to read this stuff while you do your thing. Weird. And um, I put a comparison out there just to show how some players, rookie big men, who had a young rookie season, came out of high school, per se, and how they developed their rookie year to show the comparison of timelines. Mm -hmm. I am not saying, and this comparison is to Kevin Garnett, I am not saying that James Wiseman is Kevin Garnett or they are the same player or anything like that. You're saying he's gonna be better than Kevin Garnett. Yeah, sure. But the point is, Kevin Garnett, the first 45 games of his rookie season, mm -hmm. averaged about 21.6 minutes per, uh, per game, which okay. is about what James Wiseman is. And he was averaging 6.6 .6 points, 42% from the field, four rebounds, 1.2 blocks. So his numbers were very low for the first 45 games, which he played consistently. The last 35 games of that season, he played almost 38 minutes a game, Ooh. 15 points per game, 54%, nine rebounds, two blocks. He was incredible for that last little bit. And so for his trajectory- That's more than a bit. He needed 
that consistency out there yeah. for a while. They are not the same player. However, it is interesting to see what could happen throughout a season and just bam. And just like that, bam, our show's over. Wow, you're good, you. Bam, you're good, you. <laughs> Very impressive work by Drew Schiller.